A lot of people have been sending me messages saying that they're on a budget to build a new gaming computer, but they don't necessarily have such a low budget that they need to get used parts. First of all, there is nothing wrong with used parts, but I can understand that a lot of you want the safety of a warranty that comes when you buy new parts. So without further ado, here's the 2200G AMD Ryzen build that I have been promising. For the motherboard, I used an MSI B350M, which cost me 60 bucks on sale. For the CPU, we're using AMD's new processor, the 2200G with integrated graphics. For the graphics card, we're not using one. Shh, you're safe this time. For the RAM, we're using eight gigabytes of Vengeance LPX running at 2400 megahertz. For the power supply, as always, we're using the EVGA 450BT. For the case, we're using the Masterbox Lite 3.0, 3.0, I think. And finally, for the solid state drive, we are using the Patriot Burst, which comes in at 120 gigabytes. Now, in traditional fashion on my channel, I obviously try to build this for as cheap as possible. And typically, a build like this is gonna cost the normal person around $300. It should be under $300 if you're patient and you can deal hunt well enough. However, what makes this build unique to me is I was able to build it for barely over $200 because of a mislabeling on an Amazon sale that I was able to buy on the RAM. Long story short, after multiple complaints on my behalf and a lot of miscommunication, I finally got the RAM that I ordered for free. DDR4 RAM for free? How? You just have to calmly complain a lot. But moving on from that, obviously you came here to see how does this computer perform on video games. And here are my notes. First, if you're gonna be gaming on this computer, you need to turn off the anti-aliasing on everything. Aliasing, aliasing, aliasing. Turn off the AA thing. If you're wondering what anti-aliasing is, a quick Google search will explain it, but from my understanding, it is the setting in games that smooths out all the vertices, so characters and objects in the game actually have a nice smooth look. Unfortunately, that rendering is really tough on your system, and since we're using the 2200G, which has both integrated graphics as well as your actual processor, your computer is really gonna struggle to process that, so what you need to do is turn it off so you can get the most performance for the actual time you spend gaming. The consequence of not turning it off is you will get massive frame dips, which I experienced every time I tried to play games with it on. Overall, this PC is great for medium to low end gaming. This computer would be perfect for games like League of Legends, CSGO, Rocket League, and pretty much any other esports title. For games like PUBG or Fallout 4, this computer will struggle a little bit, but you'll actually be surprised by how well it can perform considering these are integrated graphics. So, is it worth spending $300 to build this computer? In my opinion, I would say yes, absolutely. The reason I say that is because this computer has massive amounts of upgradability. Assuming you have $300 to spend on a new computer in the first place, I'm assuming you have some type of income that will allow you to buy parts for this computer in the future. The first thing being is that you can actually upgrade this entire system simply by buying a graphics card. Obviously right now, even with the decline of mining and cryptocurrency, graphics cards are still really expensive to buy and they are by far the biggest budget killer when it comes to building a PC today. So if you can't afford one right now, buying a 2200G would actually be a solid option to tide you over for your gaming needs. If you saw in a previous video, I actually had a 1080 running in this 2200G system I have behind me, and it was able to handle it just fine. I saw no bottlenecking from the CPU no matter what game I ran, even though it is not a hyper-threaded CPU, it runs at 3.6 gigahertz, which is plenty for any game that you'll be playing today. On top of that, down the line, if you want to buy a more powerful processor, you can because this AM4 socket supports all of the Ryzen CPUs. While we're on the subject of compatibility, there's something I need to share with you before you buy any of these parts and build this computer. The 2200G and the 2400G are part of the Raven Ridge series of processors that AMD has released. So what I'm trying to say is that some of the older motherboards that you can get for cheap, like the B350M, do not support the Raven Ridge right out of the box. If you buy the same motherboard that I did, you will have to flash it so that it can support the new 2200G and the 2400G processors. If you're new to computer building and don't know what flashing a motherboard means, it basically means upgrading the software that already came installed on the motherboard. However, you're not gonna be able to do that unless you already have a processor that is compatible with one of these older motherboards. 
I was fortunate enough to have a Ryzen 5 1400 lying around that I flashed it with. However, if you don't, what you can do is actually go to AMD's website and get what they call a boot kit. If you sign up for it, they are offering a free service which they will send you a CPU which you can use to flash your motherboard assuming you send it back afterwards. They do all this for free. I just didn't want to do it because I didn't have the patience. So before I show you the benchmarks, at this budget range, I think this computer plays games very well. The dollar for performance is exceptional. That ratio is probably one of the best you will see, especially in today's market. I would call this the perfect little sibling build, but if you're building it for yourself, I would say this is an excellent starting point to get into PC gaming. And now, without further ado, here are the benchmarks.
Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, like I've said before, reach out to me on my Discord. I'll put the link in the description. And as always, thank you so much and have an awesome day. Awesome day? I always say good or great. Have a great, have a good day. Um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this computer uh, going forward in the future, um, but I might consider doing it for a giveaway. Mm, should I?